And maybe next week we'll go back and redo it then. But this week we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the wine. And so uh, it's a very well done study. You don't have to be at the first two to, to you can just pick up. Uh, each one kind of stands on its own. But we will be, uh, that's this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. So would you stand and join us for a time of worship?
but from Indianapolis to share uh, where his uh, journey and story and uh, his ministry and a message for us this morning. And uh, and so uh, we're just going to welcome him. The children are going to ask to stay in the service here today. Uh, and uh, and at the end of the service, we're going to take up an offering. And Bob's going to have a time of prayer over people up front if you'd like to come and, and have him pray over you. But uh, um, I'm, I'm afraid that he still hasn't figured out how to turn the microphone on over there. So I'm going to have to do that for him. <laughs> hey, it's really good to see you all. Praise the Lord. Lord, I thank you for bringing us back to Leatherwood today. I love this church and this people. I just pray that you would anoint me today to speak this word. Just say it through me like you said it to me and bless the people, I pray. In Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we ask. Amen. Hey, let's do James chapter 4, verse 7. Um, relatively familiar portion of the text, uh, but the Lord gave me something out of it I thought would really be a blessing. Um, James 4 7, uh, 6 is awfully important, so is 8, but I just tried to narrow it down to 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The word resist here actually means to run away from, to um, turn your back on. Get out as soon as you can. It's not like in First Peter, when, when Peter said to stiffen up and don't budge, become steadfast. This word resist actually means to get away from trouble as, as soon as possible. Um, many times people get upset when things don't go right. I've seen a lot of people lose their Christian experience. You can't quit every time something goes wrong. Hallelujah. We quit every day. Come on, man. You've got to hang in there and trust God. That God's got a plan for your life. Regardless of how hard the thing gets, that the Lord is going to turn it around. That what you're going through now is going to be a witness to somebody on the other side. Glory to God. That when you come out of it, the Lord's going to do something. Um, when the Lord started speaking about this resist the devil and flee, I remember back in Genesis uh, 39, uh, verses 10 through 12, there was a, a, a prime minister named Potiphar. And, and he was buried. And Joseph, the guy with the, um, the, the coat of many colors, um, that fella um, worked for him. He was in charge of everything at Potiphar's house. And in verse 10, Potiphar's wife kind of had a thing for Joseph. And it says in verse 10, And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even to be with her. And verse 11, one day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants were inside. And she caught him by the cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and he ran out of the house. I thought that picture right there is the greatest picture of removing yourself. It's, in other words, it's better to lose your jacket running away than lose your mantle by staying. You can lose your place in the Holy One. The anointing or the blessing that God's given you when you start compromising. Compromise, you know, when you give your life to the Lord, the gray areas get smaller. And it becomes black and white. It's like if you had a bucket of scalding hot water and a bucket of cold water, and you threw them into one great big tub. It would be steam at first, but then the hot ends up cooling down. And who we're with and who we allow to influence us changes the temperature of our lives. And it's so important to keep the temperature of your heart right before God. God puts you in a place in your work or in, in your school or in your day-to-day, -to, -day, to share Jesus, to be the person that God calls you to be. You can't allow yourself to lose that precious anointing from heaven or that place in God. It's kind of like it, it lowers your immune system. You know how that when your immune system gets low. So like, um, you know, you've been praying for me for some time. I, I fought this terrible infection through my sinus and I'm taking most of my teeth. 
see a hole in my jaw. It's just all, just about killed me. But God, hallelujah. And I'm going to have a massive oral surgery and um, have all the, they're broke at the gum. It's just a terrible situation. I keep expecting every day that the Lord is going to replace it and I'll be eating peanut brittle on my way back to Indianapolis. <laughs> but um, I can barely get peanut butter down right now. But I'm trusting God. Um, the Lord used me and there's a dentist that has given his life to the Lord. And he's going he's gonna to take all these teeth and um, uh, we just have to trust God for dentures or something. And anyways, um, you know my heart, they had, uh, um, said that I had pneumonia and asthma and all those weeks that I couldn't talk was fighting this terrible infection. Eight months. And um, But, the oh Lord, I haven't shut up in weeks now, as you can see. Hallelujah. The gift of gab is back upon me. And um, the Lord is using me and you're getting hundreds saved. Praise the name of Jesus. And uh, when I was in the hospital with my heart, I was in heart failure, and um, and um, they had told me I had pneumonia for several months. And um, it was a slight misdiagnosis. And then I had asthma, but it was um, congestive heart failure. They told me my heart was only operating at 35%. Well, it turns out this is very expensive. And I couldn't afford it, so I just gave it back. <laughs> You're going to have to heal me, Lord. I can't deal with this. And um, the Lord has done an amazing thing. I sold my home in Cleveland and got a home built in 1900 out in Indianapolis near the Hope Center. And um, Hope Center, there's some, some bulletins back there, some new pop pack reports, just to show you a bit about Hope Center. Hope Center is the place where I serve as a pastor on the campus. And um, at, the, at, at Hope Center, if you'll show that first picture, please. Over one million people that we know of, that we know of, are trafficked right now. So Hope Center is about 28 acres. There's about uh, 200,000 square foot of building. Stephen is with me, he is a volunteer there. I don't have a vehicle that runs right now. So it's cut kind of into my um, traveling ministry. They'll be praying for me. I really need a vehicle. Um, I'm trying to stay there as much as I can to serve as the campus pastor. Hundreds of people come there every day. Um, we can't say how many girls are with us. We're under a strict covenant to not say that. But we have seen 115 survivors um, come through that have been um, delivered. We watch girls that have come from all over. And these people have been changed by the things of God. You can show that next um, picture, please. Um, when the Lord changed them, it shows their age ranges. Some of these girls have some of the most horrific stories. You know, I've always believed I was going to be used in Cleveland. And um, I, we won a lot of people. When I left there, I thought, how could I leave my one last bar? I gave away all my furniture. And I went down to this local bar. And I said, who, um, who, who needs furniture? Yeah, I need furniture. I said, well, I took pictures of the furniture. And I prayed with 11 people that gave their life to Jesus. I said, give me 10 minutes of your time. And I'll give you this couch. And I'll give you this TV. And I just gave, just was planting seed into the people that had nothing. People whose children were sleeping on, you know, pallets made out of a blanket or, you know, pillow. And then when I went to Hope Center, you know, we started this seven years ago. I've been traveling there over seven years. And um, Hobby Lobby was going to give us $5 million to purchase this old Kmart. But <clears throat> it needed $10 million for the work. And the Lord gave me a vision of this college campus. And that's where we're at now. So I've moved here and right down the road from there, I serve as the campus pastor. It's not a paying position. I'm going to launch a church there in the fall, the Lord willing, that will help me provide a salary. So I'm just asking you to pray about supporting me as I go through this. Um, all the work there is, is volunteer. The girls come from all over the place. Um, the first night I was there seven years ago, six years ago, um, the first night I stayed there, 
David, my young friend, passed away. And the next picture is the one of the food pantry. This is the David Nolan um, food pantry. Kroger has partnered with us. When David died that night, he had a massive heart attack. We tried to raise him from the dead. David was already into heaven. He'd only been married a few months. I had no voice at the time. I was unable to do his wedding. But had to do, unfortunately, his funeral. His father his, uh, was a co-founder of this. Anyways, food, Kroger came in and put this food pantry in. Right now, Hope Center is feeding 30 Indianapolis inner city schools. The children don't have food. There's so much food that Kroger is giving. Um, 18,000 some baby items distributed. 8,000 households served. So the other night, uh, we should box food all day, and at 4 o'clock, cars get in line. Now, actually, they get in line around 2 o'clock, but at 4 o'clock, we start dropping food into their trunks. Like, there might be six people in the van. We put a couple boxes of food and drinks and cases of water, sheets of cookies, <coughs> bread, and peanut butter, and cheese, and ham. And, I mean, it's amazing. Fresh vegetables that, that farmers, we also have a greenhouse there where we grow our own vegetables. And um, I prayed for 142 people received the Lord Jesus last Thursday. Just sitting in vans and cars, and God was healing people in line. Bro, I'm telling you, God's put me in a place like I've traveled. I usually drive about 30 or 32 thousand miles a year. After I had this heart attack, and then they were going to, they told me, you're, you're probably going to have to have at least a double bypass. I, I lost 19 pounds of fluid in four days. I hadn't slept lying down in like over a year. And they put this uh, thing in me is do this heart catheterization. And you're awake during it, which is not anything I want to you just hit me with a hammer like in the cartoons, you know. Where's the acne hammer that Rosemary used to have? Meet me. And um, this Chinese doctor named Dr. Chan, he tried to say Shrek and Goss. I said, just say Shrek. And I would tell him, you know, I'm on this operating table, and I'm saying, keep your chin up, Chan. Chin, 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 Chan. He found no humor whatsoever. <laughs> But when he went to look for this block garden, he yelled, Shrek! Shrek! There's nothing to bypass! What has happened to you? God cleaned my heart. Amen. And I went straight to Terry Queen. people 
that come to buy books for you guys. The whole thing started one night I was doing a meeting in a house. And the Lord said over this girl, you're going to give a million dollars to this man. Well, they just chuckled and laughed. It turned out this girl was the man's daughter. The man was Pastor Hubert, the director of the facility. And she started a boutique there. Now they have three boutiques. And last year they did $1.7 million in business for the Hope Center. The girls have clothing. I can't believe. They're, they have an adopt-a-room program where a church or a group or a business says, I want to take that room. And they take these old rooms. It's an old college campus. And they take the room and they'll paint it in purple. It's one, of, one room is a princess room. One room is Africa. One, one room is um, um, steel. It has like steel and it's really slick. And it, there's just hundreds of rooms that have been redone. I just brought you this to show you the next slide. One of the, one of the most, I thought was interesting. There's a group called the Underground Railroad. And they are trained dogs. And uh, Canine Impact, um, there's 200 some dogs that come out of there. We've served 556 search warrants, 436 devices found. So this man came up with an idea that if the dog can smell drugs, the dog can be learned to smell um, electronics. And so in child pornography rings, they'll hide pornography on these, these small chips and put it in a picture, you know, back behind there or in a carpet. So if they were, were searched, no one would find it, but the dogs hit on it and sit on it. And 377 arrests have been made. And 152 children found and returned to their families. This campus has so much going on. Navy SEALs come in to train. I don't have any pictures of them. The FBI guys won't take their pictures either. But they have found such favor in this place. When the Lord spoke to me about going here, I thought, you know, this can't be the end of the work. Across the street from me in Cleveland, a guy works for the, the Transit Authority in Cleveland. And he said, Bobby, if you'll just stay, because the Lord had used me to help some of his family. He says, we can pay $30 an hour about the floor at the bus station. And, you know, I, I have more money than I've ever made with full benefits. He said, you just need to stay a year, then you can be in the union. And uh, I said, yeah, but what am I going to preach the gospel? You know, I don't have my vehicle blew up. But what are we going to do? I said, I can't do that. It's too comfortable. You know, God starts where your comfort ends. Glory to God. That is not in my notes, but somebody should write that down and email that to me. <laughs> because that is truly the Holy Spirit, brother. God starts, I don't even know what I said, but that was really good. I should have quit right there. Sometimes when you put yourself in a position that only God can get you out of it, <laughs> that you surrender your life, that you say in the name of Jesus, I'll give you my life. This is my 48th year preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. I thought I was, I really thought I was going to die. Jim and Doug tried to come and see me several times, and each time they were going to come, I ended up in the hospital. So I asked them to please stop threatening to come visit me. <laughs> neighbors saw me in the yard. My heart was slowly pumping 35%, so I would just um, pass out. And um, I'd wake up in the floor and blood all over. It just a mess. I just am so stubborn. I trust the Lord until my ankles just swelled with fluid. And then I went and they started working on me. I wish I could tell you that the Lord just swooped
in line. And by the way, that's a snowstorm in Indianapolis. <laughs> and uh, the cars went to 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 it one the next to each other. And um, and it, it'll be a quarter, half mile long, and we'll just go pray for people boxing up food. And just I don't make a salary there. I'm just asking you to pray. Voice of tomorrow.org. Of course, that's the one thing I need to put up there. I'm really not good at raising any support, as you can see. But I, put, I thought I'd put the vision in front of you. You might be able to support me. They asked me to come and serve as the pastor over the campus. They put the work in programs, into money, into counselors, into health, and all the and men and girls' lives. When you see a girl, everybody around there is wearing some kind of boot. People that are coming off drugs tend to throw up a lot. <laughs> people are getting delivered and set free. And I tell you, you just can't give up on people. I wish everyone would make it. Some of them do, some of them don't. But in the name of Jesus, I've watched girls come back. I've seen some of them get so delivered and transformed and preach the gospel now. And that's what I'm there to do is help these people. And so one day I was walking across the campus and I saw a girl carrying a garment bag in a box. I said, Sarah, let me carry that for you. And she, I mean, she said, Bobby, did you look at a house yesterday? I said, I did. She said, this is my aunt's house. When she found out you were going to be the pastor here, she's going to lower the price $20,000 so you can get in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I said, can you talk about that? She goes, I can't. My daughter's about to get married. Bob, you're carrying the bride's gown right now. The Holy Spirit hit me, Bob. And he said to me, you're carrying the gown for the bride of Christ. Something that will adorn the bride of Christ being the body of Christ for the bride of Jesus. And I'm carrying the word for the ladies that come through there. Why would God have a man go to the Hope Center? Because God wants to show just like Joseph. There are men who don't want anything from these precious women. I went there to make a deposit into them. Glory to God. Not take a withdrawal. I've got a real lady on campus, Dr. Carolyn Knight. It's called Out of Darkness. When the girls graduate, there's another portion called Take Heart, where they move out of the program. It's a three-year program, and they get their own apartment on campus. And then they get their own job. They can work with four or five giving engines on campus. People who can put them to work right there. They're fed there three times a day. I do get meals there twice a day and a box of food. Praise the Lord. And I have a well now, and I have, you know what a water softener is? I didn't know anything about this. And so um, there's chickens across the street, and then ones that go, rrr, rrr, and um, <laughs> very loud, very concerning. I've been to the drive-by shooting several times, but I've never heard that before. <laughs> and, and it's loud. And the city boy has moved to the country, and um, the Lord is using me by the when the Holy Spirit sent me there, I asked the Lord, what do we do? The Lord said to me, I sent you here to help the people build up a resistance against sin. Put yourself, it's like your immune system. What's your immune system? All this infection that's taken my teeth and my voice. And um, as you can see, I'm very, I don't even know how to smile. And, um, and it's going to get worse. The 28th of June, I'm getting all these cut out. You have to all be cut out of your mouth. There's nothing left. The Tuesday, I'm going to fly to Nova Scotia and try to, I'll do three services today. I'll do another one at 2 o'clock in uh, Punxsutawney. I've not done three services in eight months, but the strength of God is upon me. Stephen had to drive because I don't have a vehicle to get here. So, and Steve commandeered his dad's vehicle. I really heard pretty good style here today. But. So, I just came today to tell you, if you'll put yourself in a place that only God can get you out of it. He's going to make a way. I feel like the Lord hand is on me. Uh, brother, uh, wave at me. I played golf ball with you here in the back and forgot your name. A real prophet will forget. But um, <laughs> this is what you get from Shrek. But I love your family. Uh, you're part of that family. I ain't in trouble anymore. But I love these people. I see the hand of God on you. Usually I just wait to the end. But Praise the Lord. I just see the hand of God on you. There's ministry on you. Brother, the Lord's going to put you in boardrooms that you have no business being there. Like, why would they want me there? The Lord put you there. You're going to argue.
argue for the sake of righteousness. There's a grant that God's going to put in your hands that's going to touch the body of Christ over time. Finance is going to come through you. So you look over people. Sister, you have a call on you to look to people who are in need and meet their needs. Glory to God. These two ladies in the back row, wave your hand at me. Bless you both in Jesus' name. You think after being here for 27 years, I have no name. But I bless you in the name of Jesus. I've always tried to stay separate so that when I give you something, you'll know that it's from the Lord. So the hand of God is on you, good ladies there. I see the Lord's hand on you. The spirit of a mother is on you to people who don't have a mother. Your sister, your call to make people feel the nurture that comes out of a mom's heart. Glory to God. And to provide safety. Um, I believe that the two of you have an anointing. You'll always find strays. Folks of stray dog, cat, or strays like me that just belong amongst other wood people. Hallelujah. I want to say over you, some of you have struggled to find your place in the body of Christ. We'll be praying for you and releasing anything else. The Lord gives me up here later. Steve's just kind of learning his gift. He's growing in a great prophetic gift. But he's come along just to see how we operate in church services in different settings and house meeting today. But in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Would you bow your heads? Lord, I'm going to give hope to people today that are, are hopeless. Hallelujah. Or you know someone. It's hopeless. Glory to God. That it's not too late that God is not finished. I release the healer now. Glory to God. I release him over my heart. I release him over my body and my blood. That in the mighty name of Jesus, the Holy One's passing by right now. Reach out and touch him and be blessed. Be healed by the presence of the Lord. That some of you in the name of Jesus are weak today. And uh, your strength has left you. So in the name of Jesus, I pray for strength. Somebody's waiting on a donor. We bring that donor into being. Somebody is waiting in the name of Jesus for a, a lawsuit to be settled on your behalf. We release that in the name of Jesus. Father, I release into the lives of those of us who are waiting on vehicles, healings, and miracles. Praise the Lord. Some of you thought that um, you'd have to be sick the rest of your life. But in the name of Jesus, glory to God. The Lord's already healing this diabetes they tried to put on me. He's already changed my blood pressure. Praise the name of Jesus. Getting better all the time. And in the holy name of Jesus, I believe, God, you're not done. So I pray for the people. And if you're away from the Lord today, we're going to pray a prayer. I'm asking you to pray with me. Would you pray with me all through the building? And if you're away from the Lord in any way, reconnect with the Father today through these simple words, but you can repeat after me, but please mean it from your heart. I'll just ask the entire body of Christ to pray with me. Would you pray like this, Heavenly Father? I come to you in Jesus' name. And I'm sorry for anything that I may have done, I may have said, or I may have thought. Anything that's hurt your holy heart, forgive me. And I confess the blood of Jesus cleanses me of my sin and delivers me and I am saved. Jesus is my Lord. In Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for your time, Pastor.
and have Bob pray for you. Um, but if you need to get up, you are dismissed and have